Hello. So, bird flu epidemic is over. At least the restrictions on free range are over, so these fellows are running around. Yes, yes. Um, right now, the beehive needs an extension by the end of the month as the bees are filling up. Uh, too many bees in the box. Poor bees, they've been working very, very hard. I've dragged these big logs down, cherry wood, I cut last year and have been sitting and I need to cut these into boards, first strip off all the bark, cut them into boards and then bond the boards together to make a few solid hive boxes. That way I've got an insurance um, that then I'll have time to work on a proper band saw. I'm going to probably use bicycle wheels. This is my draw knife, came from my grandfather. Just terrific aluminium structure, fabric and everything. Oh, it was a beautiful. And I was very sure I was going to die. The guy I sold it to was dying of cancer. I, I told him everything that he needs to fix. It's, a, it's sort of a win-win situation. I do think I'll take up paragliding at some point. You can only do so many things. They had an, a nasty incident where someone claimed on the insurance the result. So there's no chance around here for me getting gliding lessons. The last few months, I've been driving my car to work. My car's been making a very strange noise. You know, you, you take your car out of gear, you'd be going down a hill, and there'd be just this noise. And I took all the wheels off the car, and I'm driving through a small town to get some petrol. Old officer of the law says, uh, do you know why you've been stopped? But they were very nice. You know, the police really don't want to be standing there all night with some Egypt. Two in the morning, he brought the wheel. Next day, went to the scrapyard, three new wheels. a bit of a bend in it. Slight change of plans. I can't use the wood because it's split. I thought it would have dried out after a year. Not a year, a few months. Maybe it didn't have enough time. Anyhow, cherry is a no-go. I think for the body we should take a leaf out of Tim Rose's book and use thick plywood. Four panels. F larger than the dimension of the end product beehive even pieces, at least I have something to think with. So that's very nice. First of all, I need a good clean edge on that side. One can't expect to drive an entire tree through a table saw without a little bit of wear and tear here and there. It's always good when you're not really quite sure what you're doing to actually put it together and manually measure. These will cap the outside of the hive. It'll all make sense in the end, won't it? Now, you can see here, that was a rather silly sausage. And Instead of cutting these extra long, I've cut them not quite long enough, <laughs> which isn't very good at all. Right into, ooh, that's a good tight fit.
there we are, the finished product. Look at that, nice and square, good and solid, the national hive, nice and tidy, good and square, not bad, and fits a, uh... oh, that's not good. Yes, now that, that's not quite right, is it? Hmm. Here we are again. So, we have our hive box, brood chamber. Now, I just need to manufacture 12 hive frames to go inside. But I'm going to use all of the very nice cherry wood for doing that. Mm. <sighs> right, that was a lot of woodworking. Here we have the commercially available frame. Very lightweight, being pine. Um, it's made out of four parts. Two, three, four. Five. Mm. Five parts. I'm making mine ever so slightly simpler. These have all been cut for the table saw. They're very rough, but um, that's fine. I should hardly think the bees will mind. If anything, it will help them secure the wax into the frames. And there we are. There's one. Douglas imitation frame. There's a full beehive. Brood box ready to go into the hive. Now I'll still need to put strips of wax in that railing on the inside, but otherwise yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Though, I mean it was three days work. Three days work for one new box. Um, yeah, I'll have to get a lot more efficient with this sort of work. So you can see they've, they've um, built a fair bit of comb on the top there. Let's try this one then. And these, these are obviously the, the ones that it came with. Um, oh, and this one's got some good weight to it. Oh, so what's going on there? So they've um, they've built out built out the comb a bit in a silly place down there. There's no capped comb just yet on this new frame. Um, they're just still building the frame ready. Are you thinking of moving the... Yeah, I think so. I think I'll put some of the empty ones at the doorway. Uh, is that that on there? Yeah, that's that on properly. So, I've got another problem with this hive. This is all as it came, national box and frame and base, but it was soggy yesterday. Now the bees are fine, um, and it's a nice warm sunny day today, but it was just one heavy rain shower. And see, here's the inspection board. It's all soaking wet, and it's all starting to grow mold, um, which will be no good for the bees. Can't have the bees getting a whole soggy, moldy reservoir under where they live. I mean, I mean imagine trying to live with a, a whole bunch of mold growing under your bed. Um, but yeah, I reckon it's hard to know what to do here. I think I'm going to have to rebuild this whole um, base for the hive. So to um, to sort out the issues we are having with water accumulating in the bottom of the hive 
that lino I placed on the back end isn't going to do any good. The current hive, sort of like this, and then there's just a plain flat sheet underneath of plywood which has the varroa, is for inspecting the varroa mites and then you have a, a mesh screen on top there. Um, and this is fine but rainwater comes in here and it just sort of gets into the cracks and then any water that gets in the hive just accumulates here and you get a whole muddy puddle of mold and dead bees and then the bees can't actually clean it away because there's a varroa mite, there's a, a bee screen um, what I'm thinking and I, I looked up on the, thor the forums looked up on the forums and uh, it's mostly just so you can count how infected your bees are because you'll, you can count all the varroa mites that have fallen down um, and the bees, I am making the assumption that the bees will clean said bottom of the hive themselves. This system you have to clean yourself and um, any creatures that live in that muck at the bottom are just going to parasitize your bees which is no good. Um, whilst this way, a nice slope, any rain that gets in is going to run down and the bees have full access to shooing anything unwanted in the hive out of the door. Here's the basic measurements. So it's a national. Ah, sure. Now, <laughs> I can't spell. Um, so it's 460 by 460. The plywood is 18 mil. I'd like some thicker stuff, but this is what I've got. Um, and I'm going to bring the uh, front bit out by, say, 70 millimeters. All popped together. These are nicely notched in, mortised, anyway, jointed, all routed out. Um, it's always good to slide your boxes before you lift them as that way it'll break any propolis which is holding the hive together and it won't pull frames apart when you lift it. It's not easy. Now unfortunately when I ordered these bees I didn't insist upon the queen flying, being having a flying queen so the beekeeper, he cut her poor wings off. Um, so if she's in here, I'm really Oh, I've got a phone call. How about that? Apparently I'm supposed to be at work. Whoops. Um, so providing the queen isn't in here, we're good. If I pop this on the top, the bees shouldn't have any trouble finding their way back in the hive. There we go. Okay. No, this old guy needs to go on like that. I need to swap a few frames from that one from this one. Okay. If you call cool. me if you need help and tell me what exactly to do. Generally being quiet and respectful of the bees, you don't like loud noises. Yeah, and the vibration. I'll keep I'll keep the quiet. Because woodpeckers predate bees, they'll gnaw a hole in the side and go after the bees. Yeah. Oh that's a bit of honey. Just scrape that off. This honeycomb needs to come off. They've got plenty of honey here, so that's good. 
through this one first. So they haven't built anything on that one yet. Okay. Just set that aside for now. They're not too disturbed by someone messing around with them. Oh wow, that's a few bees. Yeah, and you see they're built onto it a bit. Well, I can't really see there's a whole lot of bees on it. Yeah, well, yeah. you see it's thicker? Yeah. Than that one? It's not just a plain wax. Yeah, so I can see thin bits at yeah. the top of it, but then thicker. They've added some down. material. Hopefully they've got some honey stores here. But I had the hive the wrong way round. So all the frames were in this way instead. Oh no. And so they didn't have the airflow to be able to make proper honey. Oh, this one's got some honey on it. Oh! Oh, that's a honey frame! Let's see. I can't see the other side. Oh my, yep, that's got honey on it. Yeah. They haven't capped it off yet. No. They've only capped off a little. But that's heavy. They're like 50% honey in that one. Um, I'm cool. I wasn't going to tell you before today. I am quite scared of bees. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry. But, oh, see, you just handling them like that. It's like, no, it's it, it, the confidence comes of seeing other people looking after the bees. Yes. I, I wasn't. I was scared. I wouldn't be comfortable with this if I hadn't watched a lot of YouTube videos oh. of Cody's lab and um, who else? Oh yeah, I've seen a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that's. that's oh my. No, that's on the got other some side. Honey on Look it. at the other side. Oh, there's plenty of honey there. The queen is Mark. Loads of honey. And Mark. That's what I learned. From. That one's absolutely yeah. heavy with honey. So that's good. That's good. They're doing all right. The wet patches in the hive are underneath these, so. Oh my. Now you no. see that that one's a different colour. That's brood comb. Uh -huh. See? Okay, I've got a bee close near. Oh uh, they have added some brood where they shouldn't have, so unfortunately I have to cut that off. Oh. Uh -huh. Um <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, I'm gonna do this a few times. I think it's just them flying around. You just have to let them calm down a second when you do that. Oh, my God. oh wow. Now I need to clean off brood comb here where brood comb shouldn't be. That whole brood comb. No, I had it on my front. Here. Just here. I'm sorry, bees. Sorry, bees, I have to cut through this brood. It is a good brood. They'll. Anything I damage here too badly, they'll remove and replace. Oh, uh, all the dead bees. Sorry, bees. I'm going to just cut that section out there so I don't damage these drones. I don't leave them any dead bees in the hive. So it's kind of disrespectful. Yeah. But it'll give me an opportunity to look at those drones. Um, I you have to take these out though, because I built it. I built it up in the wrong place, so I don't have much choice. Yeah. Um, I might come a little closer. Yeah, sure. Um, if that's alright with you. have got the net, just uh, keep, keep your, stay in a place where you can step back when they get excited. Okay, I'll um, You can lift that and move it out of the way so it's somewhere a little safer. I'll move it here. Um, you might want to move the brick as well. Wind helps. Oh well, there's some on the bottom. Sunk? Yep. Alright. I think the queen's on that one, mate. Eh? Yep. I'm going to put this back gently. Ow. Whoop. Okay, step away. I think there's a bee on this shoe. Yeah, it's all bee. The bee got stuck in my watch strap there, oh, so I no. squashed it. I'll calm down a bit again. Yeah, they're okay. Don't see the queen on the frame. Oh, can't see the queen there. Alright. He's off. Oh no, that's brood comb. This is just honeycomb. Oh wow. And also, I want the red honey. Red honey? Yeah, it's hallucinogenic. Well, no, it's, it's more just a, a neurotoxin, which um, 
where it um, makes you drunk. And it, I, I want to see what it tastes like. It comes from rhododendrons, that flowering white bush there. All right. And only when uh, the rhododendron's flowering. Just keep that cooked or just put it up on No, but it's unfinished. So it would be just a waste of all the unfinished honey in there. Um, I may as well let them finish their stores. But I can cut out a section here. Oh, good. Oh, that's a oh, that's a good bit of comb. I wish I could put things. Um, don't want the bees smelling the honey you're going for. I think I'm going to put this comb, being that I've just cleaned it, in there. Uh -huh. Prep honey comb. And I think I want one more comb from the bottom here. This would be very tricky if you couldn't step away from the hive. Yeah. Could you, um, what? No, but the bee suit makes you blind because you're less adept with your movements. You're less uh, careful. You've got less motor control when your hands are taken up in gloves. All, all the really old Irish beekeeping videos, all the old German beekeeping videos, they've got big puffy hands from bee stings, but they all do it by hand. Um, bare hands. The tradition. Um, even if you get a bee sting every now and then, and eventually you get big boy hands, <laughs> big puffy hands, um, it's it's the tradition, you know. Good. Sorry, I'm coming over. Yeah. Um, I need to move these up. Oh, I'll step back. Ooh, that bee sting on my hand hurts. Yeah, the bee sting. I think. Whoop. Sorry, guys. All the lights are Make a fuss. <laughs> As soon as they're flying. Okay, so that's the top on. Um, I was faffing a bit there, so the camera ran out of footage, but there we go. Bees have now full bee expansion to twice their volume. And um, yeah, bees seem happy. Just bring these bees into focus. So yeah, there we go. Freshly grown, home grown honey. Honey. I was here for the yield. Go on, taste the honey. What do you reckon? Honey. Honey, boys. How's it taste? That is way better than your drum, honey. Yeah. Yeah. It's way better. Go on, taste the honey. What do you think? Yeah. I'm left with like a giant knife. This is exactly that I see it before me. I'll give it to you, I think. The yeast. Is this the actual, actual honey? Actual, actual, actual honey. Honey, it's it two is. Really, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Could I use a spoon? No, no, you've got to use your fingers. Oh, all right, well, I'll just put lotion on. You don't mind if this lotion is like... Oh, dear me, that Esther, so much fun. You don't want to contaminate your bowl of honey, honey. Yeah, that would be hideous. Um, we shall give you a spoon. I'm telling you. you may use yeah, I, normally I just dump my fingers in, but I just put aquifer on my hands. I'll move out the way we Yeah. Oh, it's nice and strong. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because we're just out of, well, we're still in, we're going to get about three blossoms. Mmm, also. Now that is a yield. That's a lot better than the local honey I got. This is honey. We got some honey from a clock maker a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah. And it tastes naff. Naff. That's not naff. That's not naff. That ain't naff at all. No, mate, that ain't naff. That's nice juicy bees for the goose. <laughs> Look at you fat goose munching down those bees. Oh hey goons. How's Gunter doing? Oh yours Gunter. Oh, yes. What a good goons. Yes. <laughs>